Now hopefully you already know how to find the areas of particular sectors like a semicircle and you'd also know how to find out the length of the arc around the semicircle. But if not, I'll just take you through this and then we'll build this into a more general formula for finding the areas and arc lengths of various sectors. OK, so let's imagine then we've got a circle here with a radius of r. And if we want to find out the area, the area is going to equal, in this case, half the area of a complete circle. So that would be half of, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. And if it's the arc length that we're after, well the arc length is half that of the circumference, the distance all the way around the circle. So that would simply be half of the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Now let's take another sector, a well-known sector. Here we have a quadrant which is a quarter of a circle. So again, if we were looking for the area, it would equal one quarter of the area of a circle. And the area of a circle, pi r squared. And the arc length, the distance from here to here, okay, would be a quarter the circumference. So we have that the arc length equals a quarter of the circumference. And the circumference of the circle, again, is 2 pi r. Now, OK, let's just look at these fractions again. Now, it might seem obvious that this is half a circle, and it might seem obvious that this is quarter of a circle. But we're going to be handling sectors which aren't half of circles or quarter of circles. What we need to do is find out a way of determining what fraction they are of a circle. And if we look closely at this, we should already know that this angle in here is 180 degrees. And this angle in here is 90 degrees. So when it comes to this half here, another way of looking at half then is just to remove this fraction and think of it then as 180 degrees compared with 360 degrees because 180 over 360 reduces down to 1 half, 180 being half of 360. Okay, so we could write exactly the same thing here. The arc length is 180 three sixtieths of the circumference, and that fraction would again cancel down to 1 half half of the circumference. When we go to this fraction here, which is a quarter, a quarter is 90 three sixtieths of the circle. The 90 cancels once there and into 360 four times, so we get a quarter of the area. And obviously I could change that quarter to being 90 three sixtieths of the circumference, one quarter again. OK, so we now have a method of trying to find out the area of these two particular sectors. And so we're just going to now look at finding out the area and arc lengths of sectors with other angles other than 180 degrees and 90 degrees. So I'll just remove these two diagrams and we'll put this one in. And let's imagine then that we've got a circle and we take a sector OACB. And this sector has radius R and the angle at the center let's say is theta degrees. So the area of the sector, that is the area of OACB, will be equal to a fraction of the area of the complete circle. And that fraction will be theta degrees 
over 360 degrees times the area of a circle pi r squared. And again, if we were trying to find the arc length ACB, then the arc length okay, ACB would equal a fraction theta degrees over 360 degrees of the circumference, 2 pi r. Now, in questions like this, because we've got the same angle being compared, you don't actually have to write the degrees in. Okay, so you could actually take those off if you wished. Okay? All it is, is a ratio. Now then, not only do we work in degrees, but we also can work in another angular measurement, and that is radians. So how do we handle radians? Well, we handle radians in much the same way. If we have a sector, another one here, OACB, then let's imagine that we've got the radius R, but the angle in here is theta radians. Now, radians is often written with a little c there, or they'll write in the word radians, or even they may just write theta, okay, just a number. If it is just a number, check it out. It should be in the context of the question, but it normally is radians. Anyway, I'm just going to put a c there for the moment, okay, and if we're going to work out the area of this sector, area OACB, then it's going to equal the angle, theta radians, compared with the complete turn round here, the angle that goes all the way round. Now it's not 360 degrees when you're working in radians. 360 degrees, you may remember from my earlier tutorial, is equivalent to 2 pi radians. So instead of putting it over 360, you've got to put it over 2 pi radians. So this is the fraction of the complete circle that this sector takes up. And if we're finding the area, it'll be that fraction of the area of the complete circle of pi r squared. And similarly, the arc length... I'm sure you've guessed what it's going to be by now, but the arc length ACB is going to be the angle theta radians over 2 pi radians times 2 pi r. Okay? So we have two formulas, two sets of formulas, one when we're working in degrees and the other when we're working in radians. Now, it's very important, I feel, that you don't just learn the formulas. But it's important that you understand the method that's being used. What we're doing is, if we're finding the area of a sector, it is just simply the fraction, whether it be theta degrees over 360 degrees or theta radians over 2 pi radians, it's always that fraction of the area of the circle, the area being pi r squared. Okay? And again, if it's the arc length, it is the fraction, working in degrees, it's theta degrees over 360 degrees, or in radians, theta radians over 2 pi, that's the fraction of the circumference, 2 pi r. Okay? So, hopefully, you understand that method and can then apply it to any question.